Hey guys, so I have a Siconic TwinMate L208 light meter here. Um, this is a great, small, compact, easy to use light meter um, that probably a lot of photographers have in their pockets for their manual focus cameras. Um, the one I have, when I bought it, I realized this light meter is giving me a constantly um, inaccurate reading. So what I, what I mean by that is uh, every of my other camera. So I have some other cameras to compare my exposures with. Uh, usually when I get a light meter, I always compare with the rest of the gang. So the thing I'm comparing with is my Olympus OM4 tie, which has a very accurate uh, silicon blue cell spot metering in here. And I also compare with my A7R, which is a digital camera. And lastly, I compared with my 30 year old Siconic L188. This, this meter has been super reliable. It gives the exact SAM rating, exact SAM rating as the other two cameras. So I know when I point to a particular thing that my other cameras are all agreeing on themselves, except this little guy. So this little guy always exposes, um, let's see. So I'm gonna do a reading here. Now you can see the needle is actually over there. So the actual reading is F4 at 250th of a second. Um, but as you can see, the needle is asking me to expose at 500th of a second. So it's running a little hot, okay? So we're gonna actually calibrate this meter. It's very, very, very easy, okay? I didn't see anybody else do it. And again, if you don't trust yourself, send this to a professional service provider, Psychonic. They'll be able to do it for you for a fee about at least $50. In 2022's inflation, I don't know how much that's gonna cost, but I'm gonna do it myself. And it's super easy, okay? All you need, again, as I said, a reliable source of other information to get a accurate exposure. I'm exposing for a white wall. All my other meters is saying at F4, 250th of a second at ISO 400, it's the proper exposure. Same with my digital camera, same with my super old light meter right here, except this guy. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys very easily because I already did it and I want to share my information with you guys so you save your guys some trouble and you don't, you don't have to fiddle around with, you know, compensating for the ISO dial and crap like that. You can have the proper ISO and the proper exposure. Tools you need, a GRS cross point screwdriver uh, used to service a lot of uh, Japanese cameras, 35 millimeter film cameras as well, uh, it's needed. And you also need a just a, a slotted screwdriver of a appropriate size. So the one I have here, this little kit actually works great. Let's open up the uh, light meter first. Just two screws to unscrew and you don't even have to uh, remove the battery. Like the battery can stay in there because the light meter gets separated very, very easily. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how. And eventually I'm probably gonna put the camera on the tripod and show you guys how I adjust the meter. Extremely simple. I'm surprised nobody has done this on YouTube since it's a super easy fix. Okay, so once you have the screws loosened, you flip it over, the screw is gonna fall out. And uh, save those, you don't want those flying around. And what are you gonna do next? Pop this open. Over here is the actual design of the, of, the, uh, of the circuit board. There is only one thing you need to adjust, okay? And that is this little voltage adjustment right here, the VR1. The VR1 controls the needle movements over here. So, um, as I said earlier, we get a accurate reading of uh, 250th of a second at F4. All right, it's actually a two-step process. So I am going to show you guys, you don't have to have the screw mounted over here. So we're gonna do an initial reading first, and then we're gonna align the thing As you can see, this is the initial reading. 
which is telling me to go to 500th of a second at f4, but I want it to be 250th of a second at f4, and you'd notice where the needle is, okay? You make a little mark. I guess you could use a, a, a dry eraser a marker, but for me, I just noticed that this mark actually right now points all the way to the top where that little white dot is, like slightly below that white dot. That's where I want the meter needle to line up with. So I am going to just go ahead and try to adjust the needle back to the white point from the original position, which is a little bit to the right side. All right, now I have my camera on the stand. Let's, uh, let's start. And again, as I mentioned, I'm pointing that needle to the green area right here. Okay, uh, we're aiming for that. And uh, let's see. So we're gonna remove the top again. We don't have to care, care about the top. And you need a reliable, a reliable light source and a reliable background. And uh, again, I'm using the white wall over there. So I'm gonna point to the white wall and hit the measurement button. It's gonna, it's gonna bring up the needle. As you can see right now, the needle is over the dot. Now it's the time to use a slotted screwdriver. So the meter only comes up for about 10 seconds. You have to do this quick. You're gonna use a slotted screwdriver to adjust the VR1 and turn it. Gonna use a smaller one. And I probably have to do it again. Yep. So once you turn this counterclockwise, you're gonna see your needle value drop. And uh, that's probably where it stopped. So we can do a confirmation by putting this back here and do another measurement and see if the needle actually line up with our confirmed reading of F4 at 250th of a second. So slightly under, so we're gonna turn it uh, clockwise just a little bit. And again, you only need very, very small movements, very, very small movements. Perfect. So the needle agrees with the green arrow and uh, your adjustment is done. So next step, Put the screws back and lock it. And that's that's the basic calibration. It's pretty much just adjust the VR, VR1 uh, voltage to get to the correct value. And uh, we're gonna do another measurement comparing both meters. And they all agree on each other. So that is how you do the adjustments for this one. Now, I, I never even adjusted this L188 and it's, it's been decades. So this meter has been reliable, but I guess the silicon blue cell one, maybe it needs adjustments once in a while or if you haven't used it for a while, but uh, um, that's how easy you can adjust for the meeting or for the reading. Um, I did not use ambient to for the adjustment because I don't have a reliable source uh, for ambient light reading compared to other meters because every other meter is incident. So it's better to compare incident with incident reading. And either way, you're going to get a very accurate reading, uh, you know, regardless. So if you guys have any questions on how to adjust the uh, TwinMate L208, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below um, and I'd be happy to answer. And if you did find this video helpful in helping you getting your meter working again, do hit the like button or subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.